You found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episode, me and Pat are going to discuss Lonzo Ball opting into the final year of his contract and why you guys shouldn't have been surprised by that. Also, Tim Bond Temps from ESPN uh, says the NBA execs around the league are expecting a very busy offseason from a lot of teams. We're going to talk about that. And should any Bulls be untouchable in the trade market? Me and Pat are going to discuss all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. Hey, I like it. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily Chicago Bulls podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host and creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central uh, YouTube pages and podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Game off. We got to talk about Monopoly Go, the fast paced game that lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. So download Monopoly Go now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Pat. Let's get into it, man. Lonzo Ball opts into the final year of his contract for $21 million. This kind of, even though there wasn't really any question, I don't think me and you have even ever talked about it as if Lonzo wasn't going to pick up the option. It was clear. It's a $21 million player option for a player that hasn't played basketball in two years and five months. Guess what? He's going to pick that up because there's not any chance of him getting anything, maybe anything on the market right now, much less anything close to that. So, Pat, the question I kind of want to spin to you is, A, how do you feel about that? And, B, when you look at the options now, what that means, if this team does want to look to move on from Lonzo, they have the wave and stretch option, they still have the career-ending injury exception option, or they could potentially trade him as he's an expiring contract. What do you think about all that? Well, I think this is Lonzo putting the ball back in the Bulls' court, right? Like, you have to – You, I, I fully expected him to take pick up this option. I mean, at this point, the, the contract's so nasty, he might as well be a 6'9 guy. You know what I mean, but it's just – I think realistically speaking that you have to now look at the Chicago Bulls and say, okay, if you're going, you knew he was going to pick up this number. What are you now going to do to put your team in a good position? You do have a lot of options here, but <coughs> excuse me. You also have to get your, your team reevaluated or your uh, lines are reevaluated by the independent doctor to see, are we still at the point where we're talking career ending injury exception? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we are there anymore, right? Like he, he may, Fair. This may not be a he's done from this standpoint of he can get back on a basketball court, which means that the NBA probably won't allow you that career ending injury exception, which means you probably missed your window to try and get that done. You were trying to be the nice guy. You were trying to be the guy that, hey, listen, we're going to sit here and we're going to wait this out. We're going to support him. We're going to make sure he gets his money, blah, blah. All these scenarios. I think the weird part about this is in a lot of Bulls fans' minds, it almost leads them to believe that he's not that Lonzo somehow gets screwed out of his money. And he does Bulls not. Either, any of the, he gets he's getting all paid the money. all these scenarios. He's getting No paid. matter what. Yes. So I just think that this is bad business by the Chicago Bulls. And I love that Lonzo Ball is putting the business back on them, saying, listen, um, y'all y'all want to do this? Uh, I'm going to pick up this option. I'm going to get my money. And you're going to let me know if I'm playing for you or not this season. And more than likely, I think Lonzo is going to end up hitting the court for the Chicago Bulls. I don't think that you're at a point now, especially with how he's been rehabbing now. He hasn't gotten into contact, full contact, partial contact, all of that. That's still all to be seen, so you don't know what timeline it is. But for a career-ending injury exception, there has to be belief that Lonzo Ball will never play basketball in the NBA again. Yeah. I but don't, and, well, so, well, that's not necessarily the barrier. The barrier is that it has to be a greater chance than not he will not be able to, to make a, a impactful return. So it doesn't mean that he that they have to say, oh, he's never going to get on a basketball court again. It just has to be that, hey, even if he is clear for play basketball again, is he going to be able to stay healthy enough to actually have a career? So it's a little bit of a difference. There's a little bit of a wiggle room in there for the Chicago Bulls. Um, if they better do have a good doctor. Go that route. <laughs> you better have a, you better have I mean, a doctor the, with the a slanted is, view. You got to look at it like this and say, to me, is that, the, just the fact that this is a surgery that not even has no p NBA player ever returned from, there's been very few players, professional players in, in any league, in any sport to return from this. Yeah. Maybe that, that, that gives them a little bit higher chance of what it seems like. But like you said, I mean, 
it's interesting to say the least. The wave and stretch option is there, which would then you you could wave it, and then it'll stretch out Lonzo Ball's contract over three years. So you'd be paying him about seven million dollars over the next three years, right. which the rest of that does go to your salary cap. So that's still another option there as well. And then we've seen expiring contracts moved before. So I, I'd say this, right? And I've, I've maintained this the entire time. It's not even worth it at this point. The time where it's been worth it for you to try and pull all those moves off is two years ago. Why is it not still worth it when we're right up against the, 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 the wave and stretch option right now, um, you're now adding basically $7 million to your salary cap over the next three years when you could just mm -hmm. eat it this year, run it out there with the young guys you got. And wow, never. That sounds like right. we're on the next track. Uh, whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> we know, uh, well, that's lies that, but uh, <laughs> they're not like us, but no, I just, I just OV, <laughs> y'all know the rest. <laughs> I think you can say that on here. Can you not oh, say that? Oh, I, I, don't you, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I've said it before on here. I was gonna say, is Ho crazy? Yeah, you know, we're, we are the team of the guy. That used Ho more than anybody else. I don't think we can. This is true. We have to get some kind of this pass on that. This is true. This is Michael very Jordan, accurate. the only guy in the world I've ever heard use Ho fluently. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But no. Um, the reason I said it's not worth it, though, is because, right, you, you might as well deal with it. Worst case scenario, like I said, you got the young guys on the team. You let them play it out. You let them figure it out. If they're not good enough, guess what? You keep your draft pick. If they are good enough, guess what? You lose your draft pick, but you know they're freaking good enough to get you into a top, you know, six area, and you go out there and you ball out. or And then you don't have to worry about it for the next two years. Or we're sitting here still talking about this Lonzo Ball contract in 2026. Like, I'd, I'd rather just be done with it. This is the year where you kind of can just say, we don't want to suck, but we want to be, you know, as close to that borderline as we can, or we're just all the way competitive. I don't think that you're going to get another year like this where you kind of have that line of demarcation. I mean, it really, I get what you're saying as far as just letting it expire and be done with it. But I don't think that, I don't think that it, it devoids completely from benefit because keep in mind, if they re-sign DeMar DeRozan and Patrick Williams, we're at the luxury tax without, and we still got two open roster spots. So I think you still, it benefits in the fact of still being able to put a full team out there and even if it's straight out over three years, you still got two more years in the contract of Kobe before you have to worry about extending him. Patrick Williams is getting an extension this offseason, so maybe that may determine it, what they feel Patrick's value is, is worth, maybe. Um, I guess it just it's a lot of things up in air to really, a lot of different permutations to where it could be valuable to wave and stretch him, but then it could also be if you can fit it enough under there where you're just like, all right, cool, we're just going to, we're going to be right up against the ain't no buyout options this year happening yeah. for us, young man. So well, maybe that's me, what it is. Let me ask you this, right? Let's say here's kind of my question because there are, there is a, listen, I hope Lonzo Ball is able to come back. I, I know it sounds like, but my thing is like, I don't want to see him get hurt again. I'm tired of watching this man go down and, and, and deal with more injuries. So like, that's kind of where I'm at on like the human aspect. Like, just go live your life. You're rich. You're good. You got 80 mil. You got to be doing something right. Right. But let's say Lonzo Ball comes back. Um, he comes back. 80% of himself, which is still a very valuable point guard offensively as far as facilitating the ball. Maybe he's not the same shooter. Uh, maybe he's, you know, 75, 80% of the defender he is. And he absolutely proves to be this key that AK was waiting. He's still better than Javon Carter. Absolutely better than Javon Carter. He seems to be, it seems to be that he's the key that AK has been waiting for for three years. Yeah. Would you resign him? No. I'm I'm sorry. It's just because that's, of the that's, injury. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, because of the injury. There's there's like there's literally no point. Like I and don't get me wrong. I would love to see Lonzo. I hope he does make a return. But to me, it's just too much of a risk uh, to really unless unless he's taking if if Lonzo's willing to take a four million dollar contract, I consider it. I mean, I yeah, I guess right. Everything's at a price. If yeah. if Lonzo's willing to come back at a price that basically yeah doesn't impact the Bulls uh, in the slightest. But I mean, what we're hoping for. I mean, in comparison, is a Sean Livingston comeback at this point. Sean Livingston took some bad contracts before he finally got re-upped with a good one. You know what I mean? Like, what was it? Uh, after after the second ring? I think they finally were like, all right, we're going we gonna to get my man money right. But I think Sean Livingston was basically on some, like, vet men style, maybe a little bit more than vet men, but some, some very low-money contracts. Is Lonzo going to be willing to take that? If he is, do you want to deal with that here? Because that's still a key piece in your system. Somebody you heavily rely on. You would, 
I mean, if you find out that he's the piece you've been waiting for for three years, you're talking about, okay, we're kind of building you into the equation. What happens if he goes down again? Like the, money wise is one thing, but play on the court wise, right? You're, you still need to replace you, that. You, or you have can't a, build a foundation on a shaky knee is really what it just comes down Facts. to, bro. Facts. And that I and know that sounds cold and whatnot, and there is absolutely human element into it. But unfortunately, you got to build a team here. It'd be different if we were like one of those teams where we're like almost the Eastern Conference finalists. It's like, all right, yeah, we could we could afford to have Lonzo on the back end of the bench. We're not anywhere close to that. Yeah. So yeah, no, like in this scenario, Lonzo's playing. <laughs> See, <laughs> like I, I'm a, I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. I think no matter what you hit in the next season, if he's healthy, Lonzo's probably playing. <laughs> You got Leroy back there. Leroy, Leroy is probably going to be ahead of Lonzo Ball. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. know. I Listen, don't know. That's crazy. Imagine losing your spot to somebody who hasn't played basketball in three years. That's crazy, bro. That's wild. <laughs> but with that said, next thing we're going to be talking about a busy offseason expected around the NBA. But before we do that, I got to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors. And the first one is uh, Monopoly Go. All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But th there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much uh, more to get. Unique stickers you can trade with friends to compete, complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces uh, to travel boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A, a ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a robot pinchinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now. Free on, on free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Also got to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors, and that is FanDuel. It's another winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Unfortunately, there are no Chicago teams in either the NBA or NHL playoffs. So you guys go and got to find your own team that you feel like betting on there. There's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff a shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I mean, that's not entirely true. You, you could probably play some fam dual bets on the sky, right? It's a playoff. It's specifically said playoffs. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is true. This yeah, is you, true. Can, you can play some fan dual on, on, on the sky. So there you guys go on that. You can. Um, if you can find Pat, where to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the new screen. WNBA fans that are like, why are all these games not televised? It's Bro, like, well, wait. Well, wait, wait until they find out that there's a game on a Tuesday that airs at like 11 a.m. <laughs> hey, hey, wait till that, bro. The I can't random, wait till those reactions. The random Wednesday 3.30 afternoon game that's like a serious matchup for playoff implications. Yeah, like, like last year, <laughs> our first matchup against the Aces aired on Twitter. It was literally aired on Twitter. That was the actual airing spot for it, the planned airing spot. If I'm you like, ain't watched the game here? on Twitter live, you ain't a WNBA fan. <laughs> like, come on, bro. <laughs> no, you know, real y'all wasn't with us shooting in the gym if you don't remember when uh, WNBA games were on the O network. Ooh. There you go. That, that's a, that's a, that's a throwback there. You you remember the brief time they tried to air it on Lifetime and they quickly realized women don't actually support women's sports. <laughs> but you know that's another story for another day. <laughs> hey, you about to get canceled, though. My bad. I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. Oh, ho. They not like us. They not like us. Not like us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, ESPN's uh, Tim Bontemps uh, said that uh, an anonymous in a, in a NBA execs, a number of them, believe that it's going to be a very active summer on the trade market, specifically no noting that teams like the Golden State Warriors, Boston Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks, Phoenix Suns, Clippers, and the Cleveland Cavaliers could be very active out on the trade market as they look to either kind of you know, unload some players or, or they're at a, a risk of losing some players. So they could be out to acquire uh, some other players. The question I'm going to throw to you, Pat, and the most important thing to this is with AK saying that he wants to make changes, do you think that AK 
can maneuver a, a offseason where it seems like a lot of teams are going to be buyers, can AK find a way to take advantage of it? I think the Clippers is an interesting one, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm sitting here watching um, kind of how everything is playing out with the Clippers and how the C. I mean, listen, this is a... I understand Russ's Russ's Instagram post and he's saying y'all want to hear from the horse's mouth and all of that. But this is a failure of a season. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm I'm sorry. This is like I I think in my opinion, I know they're about to extend them, but like this is the worst series I've ever seen Tyron Lue coach in my life. Like he just didn't coach it to me properly. Didn't use Paul George enough. Like I've watched Paul George take a team to the Western Conference Finals on his back. And you were sitting here trying to ride with James Harden. The same James Harden that always is out the playoffs. He's in a very familiar spot. He had his vacation planned heading into that final game. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but no, I just, I, I think that the Clippers is an interesting team to watch because one, we know they're willing to make dumb trades. And yeah. two, um, they have an aging team and maybe they want to pair some of those aging stars with a guy who in theory, based on who he is, what he is, where he's been, should be at this point hitting his prime. Now, we know the Zach Levine whole situation has not worked out that way, but this should be Zach Levine coming to his prime right now. Maybe the Clippers feel like they can get the most out of him. That would be a team that I would absolutely be trying to talk to. They've got the contracts on that team where you can kind of sit there and go, eh, and then a bench guy, but not a bad guy to have in it, right? You take a P.J. Tucker back. Maybe you get a Terrence Mann back, right? Like guys like that. That you're like, I don't know if they see a future with them. I don't know if they see a current with them. Um, and you you ride it out with some of those other name guys, some of those smaller name guys, and and it puts you in a better position. I think that's the best looking scenario team on this list, just because I've seen them make the trade that we all go, they wouldn't be dumb enough to make that trade, right? Oh, yeah. they oh they they made it. They made it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, they, they least, did it. There's at least one of those every single offseason where you're just like, you hear the rumor, you're like, oh, bro, that's stupid. There's no way they do that trade. And then 12 hours later, wait a second, they did it? Wait, what? Bro, it almost felt like they traded for James Harden because, like, <laughs> Philly was just like, bro, he's pouting, bro. We, we got nothing else for you. Yeah. He's like, crying. Like, Come on, bro. Just send us something. Send us anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Hilarious, man. Um, But, yeah, so uh, here's the thing. Is that I, I get it that the last two seasons now is because then I'm, I'm giving the credit for the first season they put this team together. Uh, it's been it's been nothing, been a bunch of crickets. But when people say like, oh, well, we know AK is just not going to do nothing. It's like the first year, the first 18 months they were here, they were moving. Right. We got rid of Vooch. We traded all the young players. We signed DeMar. We signed Alice Caruso. We signed Lonzo in an offseason where we had no. So I know that it's, that it's there. The question is, is that are they ready to really get off the bench and get in the game? That's the biggest question. Right. Well, I it's mean, there. Listen, They've even, done the, it. even the teams that you listed, I think there's intrigue to really flip this whole team around. Like our team could look completely different next season. Well, we do know that AK has been resistant for a rebuild, right? But a major retooling, yeah. I do think there is a possibility for that. Like, I would not be surprised. You tell me what you feel, Pat. I know this kind of leads us into the next topic as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if if we see about three or four players on this team no longer here, if they decide to get active. I think you could see some of these big-name players on this team not be here based on how the playoffs end up falling. Could I see DeMar on one of the L.A. teams? 100%. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Could I see Zach Levine on one of the LA teams? hundred percent. I think you might even be able to see Vooch on some of these teams, right? Like here's, here's now, the hold thing. On, hold on there. Hold on there. Hold on there. You're getting a little carried away now. No, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Hey, listen, I'm I, all I'm saying is this Philly's dying for a backup center. Dying. Dying. Now they may go get Andre Drummond for nothing. Yeah. But they're dying for somebody that can come in there Oh, you mean somebody who was gotten rid of because of Joel Embiid coming in and being good, and you could have now Joel Embiid, and if Vooch is willing to accept it, Nikola Vucevic is your backup center. Or you could actually run a twin bigs lineup because Joel Embiid, for the love of God, can actually move on the floor. <laughs> That's like, I, I, I think that there's a lot of movement that is available to the Bulls. And like you said, it comes down to if AK is actually going to try, going to pull the trigger on any of it. Because what those moves do is, I don't think any of those teams are sending you back anything real. Right? They're sending you back. You're, you're going to have a team next year of 
Kobe White, Ayo DeSumo, if you do kind of go with this scenario, and a slew of role players. I'm talking about a slew. A lot of them. Mm. Just, just like 17 Tory Craigs on your bench. Like, that's that's pretty much what you're rolling out there with to me. We'll see, bro. We'll see. I uh listen, I this is they, they gotta prove it. Like I said, I'm in my show me era. You show me, I'm gonna trust it. Bro, I've been this, in my show me era for two years at this point, bro. I know, these bro. Must, it's, hey, listen, I'm these here. These came back after every game and was like, we gotta be more aggressive on defense and we gotta shoot more threes. And they went into the next game and they were less aggressive on defense and shot 12 threes. <laughs> you said, at what point are you guys gonna <laughs> Thank you. What are we doing here? I just want them to tell the truth. That's all I want. Like, I just stop, I, stop lying, AK. I just, that's all stop I feel. I just feel like a little common courtesy, bro. Just tell the truth for what? Like, this team hasn't told the truth, bro, in 15 years. Like, that's crazy, bro. We want to get younger and more athletic. Whole different regime. We got D Wade and Rondo. Technically, AK and them even lied in their initial uh, coming <laughs> here because we want to build said, through the draft. We're gonna build organically through the draft. Proceeds to trade Bow. everybody and trade draft Bow. picks. Get them up out of here. <laughs> Take a pick. I don't know, man. I don't know. I it, it's. I'll tell you what. Zach Levine not turning into the player that I think they hoped that they signed, and I understand kind of the backdoor reasons why, but like that paired up with Lonzo Ball really shoots the team in the foot. Yeah. But hey, before we get into this final topic, what we got to talk about. Are there any Bulls on this team that's untouchable? Y'all just heard my breakdown of uh, some of that. Uh, I do have to tell you guys all about DoorDash. Uh, Here's the thing with DoorDash. I mean, if you want to make your mom smile starting this Mother Day, uh, start now by getting her flowers, surprise gifts from brands she loves delivered the very same day with DoorDash. Moms are a gift, so give her the best gift of all on Mother's Day. Thoughtful gifts that you can get through DoorDash, selecting from one hundred or hundreds of expertly crafted bouquets to best of tech to self-care essentials and more delivered right to her front door. Does mom have a sweet tooth? If she's a tech enthusiast, a beauty kind of sore, or she's outdoorsy, no matter what she's into, you can make her smile with a fruit or flower bouquet, makeup, tech gear, workout gear, and more all you got to do now is get all your mother's day gifts all in one place uh get 50 percent off your next order up to 15 dollars when you spend 15 plus on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now with the code locked on nba that's locked on nba l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-b-a order using doordash today terms and conditions do apply All right, Patrick, before we go, last topic of the day. Starting early in the week. Huh? I said we starting early in the week with the Patrick. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. Get it out the way. Get it out. Yeah, Monday, get it out. Listen, bro, we, we got we can only record for so long, too, because Kendrick may drop while we're on here, bro. We got to make sure you just never I need know. a Drake response at this point. Like, Drake got to say something. Six minutes, a saxophone. <laughs> hey, hey, what made Meek Mill say that like that, bro? What? Like, with all the allegations surrounded him right now, bro. bro. I have no idea, bro. I mean, I've heard about him. You know, being... what, you know what it is, though? I really think Meek Mills looks at those allegations. He's just like, I don't care. I'm just going to keep being <laughs> me. I don't care. Like, hey. did you see the, the the outfit he went viral for over the weekend? No, no. That what, was the outfit that, bro, literally, all jokes aside, all jokes aside, Um, you remember uh, Velveteen Dream in NXT? Okay. That's how he was dressed, like the Velveteen Dream. No, bro. 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 What? <sighs> Me. Get up. <laughs> Get to me. <laughs> me. What are you doing, brother? Bro, he does My not God. care. Me I'm out here living his life. He's just living, bro. He just said, hey, listen, it is what it is at this hey, point. Y'all going to believe what y'all going to believe. He said, if they find him in a shower with his, with his steamy and a towel around his nipples, you shut up and leave him alone. <laughs> Anyway, Pat, <laughs> are there any bulls on the roster that you think should be untouchable in this season, this offseason of, of change that we hope comes to the Chicago Bulls? No. Not I, even Kobe? No. Uh, I'm glad that he finally started to blossom, but, like, it, it depends on what you're getting back. Yeah, you, you have to listen. I think that Kobe has finally started to move in the right direction. I love Kobe. I think that Kobe is somebody that um, you, you can build with 
on your team, but he is not somebody that you build around on your team. And this is the NBA. You don't start winning games until you find somebody that you can win around. Look at what's happening in Minnesota right now. Straight up, just north of us. I don't know why they're in the West Coast either. Um, you know what I mean? Like, they had Carl Anthony Towns. They had Zach Levine. They had Andrew Wiggins. They had Jimmy Butler. They had, they've had had a slew of guys who we look around in the league and we go, it's pretty good players right there. Why didn't it work? Because you didn't have that guy that really was the guy to build around. You get Anthony Edwards in there two Was he now three years into the league? Two years in whatever it is, three years in the league, I think. This and uh, fourth year. Didn't he come? Wasn't he the number one pick the same year? Number one pick, same year as, as P. Will. So this is four? Fourth year, yeah. This is fourth year. So, so number one pick, same year as P. Will. Um, his team is probably competing for a shot to go to the Western Conference Final. And it doesn't feel like they just stole one versus the NBA champions. They feel like, oh, no, no. they kind of controlled that game. Hey, bro, and... And and the, the, he's he's never beaten allegations, bro. And bro, I is, wonder if he knows how much of a fan base he can build just based on attitude and facial features, bro. Like he could become the face of the league literally just because like he's this humble kid that also happens to look like Michael Jordan. <laughs> I mean, listen, Derrick Rose, they never came to face just by freaking playing for the same team and being really good. Yep. And not you know talking. I mean? And not talking. Now, nah, he ain't going to talk. I do love that. I think that's the thing, too. When he between the lines, he's a killer. But anyway, Bro, I say all that he today. That he walked into the Phoenix's locker room and told KD to make sure he laced his shoes up tight enough. That's different, bro. Like, you walked into the opposing team's locker room and said, hey, man, go ahead and lace those up real tight, bro. You're going to need them tonight. Didn't it? Who did that? Did Larry Bird do that? I don't Larry even Bird know. Do that? I think Larry Bird did that. You know what? And we got to, at some point, we got to acknowledge that Larry Bird may be the pettiest player in NBA history. I, have we not acknowledged that? I don't think, I think some people try to make it other people. I think, I think the new generation has forgotten or, or just has never been aware. Larry Bird is the same player that told Magic Johnson when Magic was closing out on him, I don't know what, what you're coming out here for and proceeded to shoot a three in his face. I, I don't think we tell the, the I don't know, no, nah, because we tell history stories pretty well. Mud's just not sitting down. You know what it is? Like, because, like, I know for me, like, my dad would sit there and watch 30 for 30s. So mm. naturally, I just fell in love with 30 for 30s. I think we've gotten to a point where there's too many people, one, who, like, just don't have their dad in their life, and two, who dads don't sit down and, like, just watch ESPN all day <laughs> because... Yeah. I learned so much history just like being around my Same. dad. Same. Like, like I just walk in the room and just be like, what are we watching? And be like, there's a documentary on Bo Jackson. Sit down and learn something. Be like, I, I, I don't. Hey, this dude pretty I got good. Nothing else to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know, bro. Like, I, that's that's such a, I feel like that art being lost is very, very tough now because like, in my mind, there's never been a more petty player than Larry Bird. Larry Bird quit college. And then when he decided to go back and play for Indiana, he showed up to the workout in jeans. And they were like, you want to put some shorts on? And then he dropped 60 in Levi jeans from the 70s. You know how stiff them jeans had to be? <laughs> you know how much... It wasn't even starch. Just cow manure had to be, like, seeped into them jeans. He was on the farm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on, now. like. That's crazy, man. Ridiculous, dog. Absolutely ridiculous. How did we get here? Oh, uh, I say I'd have to say uh, there is no player like that on this team. So being the fact that there's no player like that on this team, yeah, uh, no bulls are untouchable to me because you got to do whatever you can to get that player on your team. I don't I don't believe in tanking. I wouldn't want to see them get rid of Kobe. I wouldn't want to see them get rid of I. I wouldn't want to see them bottom out. I like what you said in the right deal, though, and I think yeah. that's, where, that's absolutely where we'd be. In the right deal... Everybody is available. I don't care who. If you can get a if you can get a true superstar here in their prime, and they say, "Yeah, we're not going to do it without Kobe." I'm sorry, I love Kobe, but you do you do that, right? But I'm not saying that the Bulls should go out and necessarily shop Kobe. It's just that in your in your search for improving this team, if you find a deal for a true shoot, surefire superstar, I mean, it got to be a superstar. If you say no because of Kobe White, I'm sorry that I gotta I gotta doubt how committed you are to one. Well, I just say history is repeating itself. And I'm not saying that these players are on the same level, but uh, we didn't get D-Wade because we wouldn't let go of Marcus Pfizer because he had a hot run. Yeah. 
We yeah. didn't get Dwayne Wade because we wouldn't let go of Marcus Pfizer. <laughs> I feel like, like, how many times, like, how many different ways can you say that? Like, that, that is a stay. You, so the shooting guard you've been looking for since Jordan left, you didn't get that guy because you wanted Marcus Pfizer, who I believe we got rid of two years later. Yeah. We'll see, man. We'll see what happens, man. Don't overvalue your pieces. That's what it comes down to to me. I think Kobe's a very valuable player, but I yep. do not think that he is a – he's not Trey Young. He's not Luka Doncic. He's not Tyrese Maxey. He's not – I mean, like, like it, I, I, there's a litany of players in this league that I don't think he is. And if if he all of a sudden magically becomes that next year, perfect. We had, we had, All the answers are – I'll tell you this. If he does that, all of your questions are answered. Everything that we that we did on this pod, we're like, should they make this trade? Could you do this? How does this work? Now you got a player to build around. It don't matter no more. You can resign tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see, man. Uh, any last words before we get up out of here, Pat? Uh, OVO, he a freaky. Uh, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. You can follow me on everything at uh, Pat the Designer. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and showing love. Absolutely, man. You guys follow me at CEO Hazy. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Bulls. We are free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube. For Path the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls, y'all. We out here. Peace. Peace. Get up! Get up! <laughs>